Hi, I'm Brian Buckhalter, NCSM Awards Chairman, and welcome to Learning with Leaders. We're all math people. Thank you for joining me and my co-host, Katie Arrington, NCSM President-Elect, as we talk with bold leaders and influencers about their math journeys and contributions. Today, we will hear from our special guest about their inspiration, perceptions, and insights about instructional decisions that make mathematics welcoming and engaging to a broad audience. Listen and learn about how beliefs, practices, and policies must continue to advance to ensure that each and every person sees themselves as a capable and powerful mathematical thinker. Hello, listeners. I'm Katie Arrington. Welcome to the NCSM podcast, Learning with Leaders. Continuing our series, We're All Math People, today's episode is a chat with two of our NCSM Board of Director colleagues responsible for coordinating the experience we all know as NCSM's annual conference. It's my pleasure to introduce you to, to, to today's podcast special guests, conference planners extraordinaire, Karen Spalding and Georgina, or Gina as we affectionately know her, Rivera. Karen Spalding serves as the 2021 20, through 2023 conference coordinator for NCSM. When she's not volunteering for our organization, she works in Louisville ISD in the North Texas area. Karen has 27 years of elementary education experience. She has served as a teacher, an elementary math coordinator, a director of mathematics, and is now the executive director of elementary curriculum and programs. Gina Rivera is a voice for equitable mathematics instruction. Gina currently works as a principal in West Hartford, Connecticut. She previously served as a mathematics teacher, coach, and elementary STEM supervisor. Georgina is active in many professional organizations and serves on several boards, including serving as the vice president of NCSM. And the vice president serves as program chair for the conference. In addition to being a servant leader and a volunteer, she's an author, a blogger, a coach, and enjoys leading professional learning. Welcome to you both. Thank you for being here. Happy to be here. And thank you for the invite. I appreciate the invite. Yes, we're so excited uh, to have you guys on. We've been waiting to talk and share with our listeners about this year's annual conference. Uh, first, can I just say it feels so good to be back together in person again. And so we're just thankful that we have the opportunity to enjoy this experience. With so, but thank you both again for joining us to get today. Uh, before we get into all of the great things planned for this year's annual conference, describe for us uh, what the work looks like. What does it take to coordinate an event like NCSM's annual conference? Well, Brian, it is um, not an easy task to build a national conference, I tell you that, but we are so fortunate in NCSM to have a conference committee that is committed to doing the work that it takes to build an amazing conference for our uh, for our members, and um, we're so excited about it. The the we start working on conferences about two years in advance. Uh, we get to start off by doing some of the fun visioning work of choosing a theme and working with marketing to develop some of the branding that we'll be using for the conference. That's all the fun stuff. And then we turn to our members to start soliciting sessions. We collect hundreds and hundreds of sessions. I think this year we had close to 500 sessions submitted uh, as uh, possibilities to consider. And we have a large group of members who help us vet our sessions. And, um, and then we narrow it down to the cream of the crop that actually make the program. And, uh, and then we build out the program room by room, session by session, time slot by time slot, so that we have a rich and diverse program uh, to offer the uh, everyone who serves in a role as supervisors of mathematics, whether that's our district leaders, campus leaders, teacher leaders, coaches, um, all anyone that considers themselves a leader in mathematics will find something uh, being offered at an NCSM conference. So that's that's all the fun part. Um, 
We also have the privilege of talking to the people that are moving and shaking as leaders in mathematics and inviting them to be special speakers like our keynotes and, and our major and spotlight speakers that will uh, be highlighted in our program to uh, really um, um, add special topics that they bring to the table. So all of that work, a huge committee of about 20 people working for two years, uh, is what it takes to build a program like ours. But I tell you what, it's a lot of fun and it's even better when we get to show up and see the faces of the people enjoying the learning and participating in networking like we all get to do when we're together. Yes, I'm with you. I can't wait to see everyone's face this year. Wow. Uh, I just want to say thank you in advance for your work. And I think you mentioned a conference committee that also works on it. So these maracas are for you, conference committee. Where to go? Thank y'all. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, Karen. It's amazing how much work goes into it. Um, but also amazing that we have so many fabulous members who are doing such wonderful things and can come together to share. So exciting. So this year's conference is going to be held on October 28th through 31st in Washington, D.C. And the theme of the conference is Windows and Mirrors, Stories of Bold Mathematics Leadership. What made you guys decide on this theme and what's the goal for this year's conference? So um, I think as a group, so as a board, we recently came out with a book, uh, an essential action series called Culturally Relevant Math Mathematics Leadership. And I think that particular book and working on that book with the team of board members really inspired the theme. Because when we looked at cultural relevance, we knew that that's an avenue where we could lean into to inspire a conference. We studied the work of Dr. Rudin Sim Bishop, which really talked about providing windows and mirrors. And we thought, what a better way than for people to show up and not only like show a reflection of their work, but us have a window insight into their work. So that's where it first started. And then after that, I thought about stories. So I, I've always been inspired by stories because if we think about history, storytelling is the way that knowledge is passed on. And so we want to pass on knowledge of different math leaders onto other leaders. And what way, better way to do that than through storytelling? And so you're going to see that theme of stories throughout each of our strands. You're also going to see events related to storytelling. And we just feel like even when you have those small conversations in the hallway and you tell a story to someone, that's where you really do the learning. So when I had the honor of like choosing the theme, I knew I was going to do something around stories because I've always been impacted by stories. I feel like stories change people for good and for bad, right, in ways, and they help teach us things. And then I wanted cultural relevance to be the center because our schools are getting more diverse, our leaders are more diverse, and so we want to provide windows and mirrors for those leaders as they attend into different practices that all of us are engaging in, in order to ensure equity for each and every one of our learners. So that's really where the theme emerged. Even when you look at the logo, you can see reflections in the water. That was intentional, right? Because we're reflections of me and windows into ourselves. And then there's a book there for storytelling and they're actually shaped in the heart because of how much we love storytelling and telling stories. And if you think about our students, they love telling stories too, but we want them to share stories of how they're successful mathematicians and how they're all mathematicians. And so that's really our goal is to inspire them in that way. Awesome. Yeah. Wow, Gina, I, I never really realized how much uh, thought, quite honestly, goes into how we want to shape this experience for, for everyone, including what's the theme of the conference. So, um, wow, what a journey to go on and in inviting everyone to look inside and look around uh, themselves during this time together, as we hopefully are encouraging each other through these stories that we're here and that we'll tell. So uh, I, I just, I love the intentionality, right? Like even down to the reflection in the water, in the logo. It's very intentional. Like once I see it, I'll never be able to unsee it. Right. <laughs> so, wow. Okay. Appreciate so, that. That was intentional. And you know, it, intention matters. Intention matters for everything. Yeah. I love it. Okay. So we've kind of got the big, the big idea here, uh, our theme of windows and mirrors, uh, stories of bold mathematics leadership. So under that theme, um, the sessions, let's talk about the sessions being offered. 
Uh, this year, the presentations have been organized into one of four strands, stories of advocacy, stories of empowerment, stories of redesigning mathematics instruction, and stories yet to be told. Uh, if you will, share with us, with our listeners, a little insight on each strand. What do, what do these strands mean? Absolutely. You know, it's uh, people in, participate in a conference in a variety of ways. Like some people come with a real goal of looking for one thing they really want to learn about. Uh, some people come really wanting to focus in on something that's a goal for their district. Some people just want a rich, diverse experience of learning. Uh, so people engage in the program in different ways. But one of the ways we organize sessions is by strand in an effort to help people narrow their field into the types of sessions that might be most interesting to them. And we, we use our strands as, as one way that people can think about which kinds of sessions they'll encounter uh, through that organizational process. So the first strand, Stories of Advocacy, uh, is going to be really fantastic. The sessions that are in that strand will focus on the development of mathematics leaders as change agents. Now, when we say mathematics leaders, we're talking about anybody. I mean, it could be people at the district level, the building level, uh, the, the classroom level. We've got, we know that there's a leader in all math people, right? Um, but uh, the proposals in this strand specifically are going to be trying to create a shared vision around high quality math teaching and learning uh, with an emphasis on curriculum and instruction design, as well as managing change as you're trying to lead curriculum and instruction design uh, within the groups of people that you work with. So the stories of advocacy strand will answer questions like, how will you remove barriers to provide all students with access to rigorous, meaningful curriculum taught by highly effective teachers? I mean, that's going to be a big one, right? Lots of sessions in that strand that are going to really appeal to people uh, because it's such an important part of our work as math leaders. Yeah, I smell a couple of sermons in there. Oh. <laughs> right? <laughs> so the second strand, the stories of empowerment, uh, that is going to be have a little different twist. So the proposals in that strand are really going to focus on how are we as leaders empowering students and teachers and teacher leaders and coaches to help grow their colleagues to higher student outcomes for each and every learner. So in this, the sessions in this strand is really going to be more about equipping people to coach into the needs of their students, the needs of their teachers. How do we coach for equity? How do we coach through an equity lens and empower our teachers to have important conversations around equitable outcomes for students? So uh, in this particular strand, we're going to encounter sessions that really lean into those stories of empowerment, not only focused on equitable math practices, but on the role of identity, agency, and efficacy as we help to develop all students to see themselves as doers of mathematics. So the third strand is about how we redesign math instruction and how it's focused more on students and their culture, because we know that math is a is a humanizing, it's a human effort, right? We all do math. We talk about that. We're all math people. This is about, this is exactly what your podcast is about. So this strand is really designed on how do we reimagine and redesign math instruction so it's really focused on students and their culture. And so what does that look like? Well, how are we helping leaders to understand how do we redesign tasks so they're focused on culture, so culturally relevant tasks? How are we supporting teachers as they're redesigning their instruction and centering it on their students, right? And, and centering student voices and what they're saying. There's also um, a, a focus on assessment and how do we redesign assessment so it's more humanizing. This strand, so this strand is really a redesigning so we can reimagine our math classrooms to be more culturally responsive. And then the final strand, which is kind of one of my favorites, I shouldn't have a favorite because they're all my favorites, but it's stories yet to be told. And those are about innovative practices. We really wanted to hear what are people doing that's brand new and creative that hasn't been done. And we even have a question that says, 
even outside the field. I think in mathematics, there's things to be learned from people who are studying literacy and the research around literacy and science and psychology. And so we're really pushing people's thinking to think about how are we telling new stories in mathematics, but connecting to these new creative ideas. Um, as a person, I love to be creative. So I love to hear interesting takes on what people are doing. So we wanted a strand where people could just say, you know what? This is a story I haven't told before, but I'm coming to NCSM to tell it for the first time. So that's kind of a fun strand, right? Yes. So that's what we're gonna <laughs> be listening to. And I'm very interested to see what people say in that innovative strand. So we're excited about all of them because of course we wanna empower our students. We wanna advocate, we wanna redesign. And we also wanna share stories that we haven't shared before. And we wanna save them just for this conference. So we're very excited about all of those strands. I can't tell you how excited I am. I just got a few little goosies, as <laughs> Jennifer Lopez might say. I love that we are offering opportunities for people to talk about their work in lots of different ways, but really leaving space for those new ideas and new spaces and new voices. I know you're going to talk a little bit about speakers and how they were chosen later, but I just love this idea of really having a lot of diverse ideas and um, leaving that space for for new thinking and, and pushing our, each other. Um, that's awesome. All right, so one highlight of the annual conference is the opportunity to, to hear from bold leaders in our field and from outside, um, many of whom we look to for guidance and resources and um, just all kinds of these great new ideas. So tell us about uh, the keynote speakers and maybe a little bit about the majors too. So um, I can start off a little bit. So for our keynote, we are going to be, we're actually going to have our kickoff on Saturday night. So I'm going to say that because that's a little bit different than CSM. So we're going to kick off on Saturday evening and we're going to open up with Lacey Robinson, who's from Unbound Ed. And so if you haven't um, heard about her, you definitely need to look her up, but she is a storyteller at heart. So that was very intentional that um, she was selected as this year's keynote when working with her team. We really loved the way that she tells stories and focuses on culturally relevant practices. So for this year's keynote, you're gonna hear her talk specifically about social justice issues around mathematics because she recently released a book and she's really spending a little time, a lot of time thinking about how can we reimagine you know, just classroom instruction in general to focus on social justice and how do we make the world a better place? And what a better way to kick off a conference than really seeking out social justice as a theme, which is part of our culturally relevant framework. So that's one of the things. I know Karen's gonna tell us about our closing speaker. Yeah, so if Lacey's gonna kick off our session, you're gonna wanna stay through the very end of our conference because Ken Williams is going to close us out. Now, there's been a lot of discussion around the fact that our conference is ending on October 31st, which for some people that celebrate Halloween is a, a notable date. But let me tell you, we are ending that day a little bit early so people will have time to get home and do whatever they wanna do Halloween evening. But they are not gonna to want to leave to early because they don't want to miss Kim Williams. I first heard Ken speak uh, at a professional learning communities at work uh, uh, conference and, and I've interacted with him and, and brought him into work both in my district and on several other occasions to learn from him. Um, and so he's going to be our closing session speaker, which will be from 1.30 to 2.30 on Tuesday, October 31st. And he is a presence. Uh, Ken knows how to fill the room with that big booming <laughs> voice of his. So I know people are going to really enjoy that. He is um, known for his powerful and engaging combination of heart, humor, and hammer. And what I love about Ken is he helps everybody to see um, the truth, to deal with the tr their truth. He, that's the hammer part of his uh, heart humor and hammer reputation because he asks ruthless questions that make people think. And so he is going to offer us some good challenges and, uh, and really um, make sure that we are focusing on the why, uh, not just the how of the work that we do as math leaders so that we can go forward with bold uh, efforts towards uh, his, towards ruthless equity, which happens to be the title of his latest book. So I know Ken Williams is going to do a great job of wrapping up um, all of the voices that we will be hearing from 
throughout the the conference. Um, in between those two incredible bookends for our conference, there's a whole slate of major and spotlight speakers that people are going to want to hear. I would encourage people to go to our website. Uh, we have a website as uh, that is mathedleadership.org, and they can click on the button for 55th annual conference and get all the details about it. But we have a whole speaker session that celebrates the speakers of our that are um, major speakers that are going to and spotlight speakers that are going to be. Um, uh, presenting in the meet part, the middle of the conference. Uh, and there's some names that you know and love that are going to be there. I mean, like Chris Childs and Peter Lilliahall and John Staley. I mean, names of, of Kathy Seeley. I mean, people that we know and love that are staples of the, Mount, the you know, Mount Rushmore's of our math community. <laughs> but we also have some really powerful and incredible new voices that are uh, that we're highlighting that I am so proud of this conference committee for asking to step forward and be featured. Uh, so if you think this is just the same old NCSM conference you've been to before, think again, because there's some really exciting people being featured on this program and some voices that have messages that you will not want to miss. So if you're a regular NCSM uh, participant, check out the website and look at these pictures. You're going to see some friendly faces that you know and love that you never want to miss. And you're going to see some people that are going to intrigue you that maybe you didn't know, but you should. So I hope that people will check that out. And I just wanted to add on like the, I just want to make sure that everybody listening knows that we were intentional about including diverse voices and diverse amongst just um, experience topics, um, looking at different ideas through different lenses. I think that was really important because we said, if we're going to put on a culturally relevant math conference, then we have to be culturally relevant within our selection process. And so that was very intentional. So I say like the names on there are um, emerging leaders or, or coming up with innovative ideas and their sessions were highly rated by our members. So one of the things, if you're working behind the scenes is like I didn't choose the sessions, our members rated these sessions and said, we wanna hear these people. So I want everybody to know like these sessions were selected by the members for the members because we wanna serve our members. And so there are gonna be some amazing sessions about things that you haven't heard about yet, but that's what creates awesome math leadership conferences is hearing innovative ideas paired with some, some people who have shared ideas, but in interesting new ways. Like even when I look at Peter's session, Everybody knows him for building thinking classrooms, but he's actually going to talk about feedback. Well, don't we want to hear about that? So I want everyone to really not only look at that, but once we go live with the agenda, look at what people are talking about. They're also being innovative within their strands and really saying, how can I bring a new twist to this idea? So I'm really, really excited about the conference because not only is it a combination of speakers, but it's them pushing their own thinking to offer sessions that are going to push all of our thinking to move towards creating accessibility for students, creating accessibility for um, leaders to be able to understand how to do this work within their districts. I love that. I, I love those ideas. I love the way you're thinking about it. And I love the passion that's in your voice. I'm, I can't wait for the for the conference, because I know the people planning it, Karen and Gina and the whole team could all speak passionately about how this was put together and what we're hoping to achieve for everybody. That that makes me feel great and makes me want October to be here now. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, as, as I was listening to you all talk about the wonderful speakers who were slated, uh, I tipped over to the website. I had to look right now. And OMG, looking at that list of your major, your key light, your keynote, your spotlight speakers, um, I just see so many people whose work I look up to, you know, whose podcasts I listen to, whose uh, research I, I look for guidance in. Uh, and then I see people that are walking beside me on this journey that we're learning together. And they're being able to present their work. By far, one of my favorite parts of the conference is just being able to interact with each other, uh, interacting with the leaders in our field, uh, emerging leaders, experienced leaders. Like that's one of my favorite parts. I don't think y'all understand. I fanboy out 
when I'm walking down the hall and like the first time I passed Jenny Bay Williams, like I just passed J-Lo, like, you know, hey, wait, no, stop. You don't understand what this moment means to me. <laughs> right, right? Uh, it was like meeting celebrities, honestly, for me. Uh, and the, the really meaningful part is, although we may go into these situations and it's like meeting celebrities, everyone's so humble. Uh, everyone is so supportive. Everyone's all about advancing the mission of quality, equitable mathematics education. So that's one of my favorite parts is uh, getting to meet keynote speakers and people uh, whose work we use in our field. Um, not that anybody asked, but a, a couple of other of my favorite parts. One, can I just say like the lunch and the ticketed menu items and those events uh, one, if you got food, you got me, okay? But outside of the food, the fellowship, like I always make friends with people who sit at my lunch table. Uh, a lot of us don't know each other. And so we meet, we exchange stories. And for the rest of the conference, we're lunch buddies. Uh, like those are some of my favorite parts, but I want to hear from you guys because you're putting so much work into presenting this conference. Um, as both pl planners and participants, what are some of your favorite parts of the conference and what are you really looking forward to at this year's conference? Well, one of the things that I particularly, I agree with you. I mean, bumping into those people who are edu famous that you know, you've know you listened to or looked up to or shared in their research for so long is is pretty amazing and you're right they're all human beings and uh and love to interact with people so that part's pretty darn great um i also like I, one of the things i like to do every time i participate at ncsm is i like to challenge myself to go to someone though that i've never ever ever heard of and i just find their session intriguing to see if i can uh find a new edge of famous you know uh role model to look up to so uh, that's a challenge i always give myself is who is the person that i've never heard of before that is going to inspire me to learn something that is a new voice in my ear so that's one of my my favorite challenges and um last year uh a friend of mine said that they challenged themselves to go to sessions all led by people of color and they were able to do that as well you know i mean like there's people that tackle these attending conferences with their favorite things like meeting new people or interacting with new people in all different ways so i love that about the the diversity of our of our program but one of the things i want to feature as a favorite thing of mine and uh is i really like the leadership exchange that we offer so if, if you haven't been to a conference and you don't know what that is we have some of our major speakers actually come into our vendor session area into an area where we just have some tables set up and they actually do some uh some follow-up conversations with people that are just open conversations conversations. They typically have a topic that they might want to talk about. It could be a continuation of what they shared in their major speaker uh, session, or it could be just a topic that they're passionate about. But this is an informal chance for you to sit down with people that you you know, the JLOs of your world and and have a conversation with them. And what a great opportunity that is. It's one of my favorite things to get to do. I mean, to sit across to from Jennifer Bay Williams or to sit across from Julie Dixon and say like, hey, what do you think about this? And here's a challenge I'm facing. Tell me your thoughts. And they ask questions and they get to learn from you. You get to learn from them in a more informal conversational way that is so cool and i don't know of any other conference that that has such generous people that are willing to give of their time for those conversations so i hope people will take advantage of that this year because it's too cool gina what's one of your favorite things from the conference um there's so many right there's so many so i would say i mean I think I, I went to my first NCSM conference maybe six years ago, and I just remember the thing that I remember the most is how um, open all the speakers are to just meeting you and asking and letting you ask questions. I think that's something that I really appreciate. I had been to larger conferences before, and they're awesome, and you learn a lot. 
But I feel like with NCSM, the level of accessibility we have to all of the speakers is so great. So whether you're at leadership exchange, you're in a hallway, you're at their session, if you have that question that's lingering as a leader, like they're always willing and they're so gracious, like everyone there is so gracious. And that's what I appreciate about NCSM is that everyone is there as a learner. And then they actually ask us questions like, how is that working for you? Because many of them are researchers or practitioners and they're like, oh, are you trying it out? How's that going for you? So even to have your um, that your ideas affirmed is like so great. Like sometimes I go to a session to see like, am I on the right track? Are we thinking about this? And then also meeting people that are interested in the same thing. So like if I'm currently looking at assessment and go to an assessment session, I'm in a community of not only like a great speaker, but then I get to talk to people who are working on the same thing. So then I get to make connections for myself. So that's one of my favorite things. The other favorite thing is like, honestly, making connections and building my network. Like I remember the first time I met Brian because him and I danced <laughs> to music at the opening day of the NCSM conference. And after that, we were just fast friends. And so the friends that I've made at NCSM, not only attending conferences, but being on the board, which I would highly recommend if you're not a volunteer, volunteer because that's how you meet people. That's how you get connected. Um, they're just people that become part of your journey and your story. And that's the whole point of it is like every year I feel like, okay, I'm going to NCSM. I'm going to add to my leadership story this year. And then I want to leave. My intention is like, what's my one thing that I'm going to walk away with and do. So I go to a lot of amazing sessions and we're very lucky because we get to go into a lot. But then my challenge to myself is like, what do I need? What am I most concerned about? Like, for example, like right now, I'm really thinking about multilingual learners in my school. And so I know I'm going to go to those sessions because I need to walk out with something related to that. So I try to be intentional. And I'm going to probably talk about that at the opening that no matter who you are, be intentional when you go to your sessions and make sure you make one commitment. You know, Chris Childs always says, when you go somewhere, make a commitment. Find one thing you're going to walk away with. You're going to go to a lot of sessions and it's easy to get flooded in a, in a conference, right? But once you've gotten your pictures and you've got your book signed and you get to ask your questions, when you leave, what are you going to do? And then I say to people, do it and then put in a proposal for the following year. That is the most awesome part of any conference, I say, because I love to see people take an idea, come back and say, this is what I did. And this is how it impacted student outcomes in a positive way. So that's one of my favorite parts. Yes, yes. It's, there's something special about going to a conference that is full of leaders, right? It's not just leaders on the stage, there's leaders in the audience. And it's so inspiring to not only hear from the speakers, but to be able to network and talk to other people in the room who you know are trying the same things and struggling with some things and having success, at, like the whole, it, it basically just makes it the whole conference is like everybody's the speaker and you get to learn so much from each other. Something special about that. It is. It is. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, while I have you here, I've got to ask you about this. Okay. So I did a little snooping and I hear there are also some special things planned around supporting the participants' wellness and some special networking surprises. Uh, just give me just a little bit, just a little taste. Tell me just a little bit more about both. All right, so I'll give you a little sneak peek of the wellness. So we all know that um, teacher wellness has been at the forefront of everybody's conversation. So one of the things that um, we are capitalizing on is the hotel itself is focused on wellness. And so we want the, the conference to be a humanizing experience because we know when we go to learn, just like students, we can't just go session, 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 session. That's not healthy. So we are strategically building times in where you can go into the, the exhibit hall, visit our sponsors and be able to get snacks and be able to hydrate yourself and take a break. Or you can go into the wellness lounge and, and go take a break there that's gonna be provided by our gracious sponsors. So those things, also the hotel itself is focused on wellness. So they're going to have different things at the hotel. We want the conference, if we're saying we're gonna be culturally relevant, then the conference has to be humanizing, which means we have to balance learning with having fun, learning with relaxation, learning and taking care of yourself. So that's what we mean by wellness is that 
it can't just be the old way that we did conferences where it would just be a flood of sessions. We actually pause the conference at certain points so you can go take a break and go get yourself some food, go get yourself some water, because we know to teach well and lead well, you have to be well. And so we're centering wellness because we know that leaders need to be well because whatever we do impacts our teachers and whatever teachers feel, they're going to impact their students. So we want to model best practices as a conference. So then leaders will go back and model that for their teachers and teachers will model it for their students. That's awesome. I'm looking forward to all of that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need some of that at the conference, right? Everybody the timing in the year, it'll be kind of a little more than halfway into the semester. So I feel like our educators and our leaders are going to need a little something, something to help them relax and learn and um, looking forward to all of that. Yes. So, okay. So uh, Karen, when you were describing the conference, you talked about anyone who sees themselves as a math leader is going to find some great things at this conference. And then a little bit later, we talked about how there's lots of people who should see themselves as a math leader, right? Lots of people have influence on how mathematics learning happens in their system. But maybe some of those people don't see themselves as a math leader specifically, or even a math person. <laughs> so uh, since our, our series is all about we're all math people, what would you guys say to those folks who are thinking, is this conference for me? What are they going to find at this conference? How would you encourage them? Absolutely. Well, first of all, we are all math people. If you're a person and you're doing math, you're a math person, right? So come to the conference. You are going to find something that feeds your heart and soul and mind in terms of your mathematics leadership. Uh, there's something for everybody. If you have been a math leader uh, for years and years and years and years and years, you're going to come and find a fresh perspective and something that inspires you to take the next step in your math leadership journey. If you have never, ever, ever considered yourself a math leader, uh, but you're in education, you might want to come to this conference and instead of focusing in on you know maybe you're a teacher in a classroom but instead of focusing in on what's the next activity I can take to do with my kids tomorrow maybe you want to come and be inspired for a session of how do I lead the teachers that are my colleagues into our, the next best version of our our team self uh, there's a little something for everyone at this session and so I would say if you're a person uh, you belong at NCSM because uh, we are all math people and there's there's enough diverse stories and en enough uh, voices sharing their thinking at this conference to give a little something for everyone. So I, I would not, um, it, it's always been my favorite conference. I mean, I know I'm a little biased because I'm part of the planning committee, <laughs> but really and truly before I was ever on the NCSM board, NCSM was my favorite conference. It's the one that fed me the most in my roles uh, in my past. So uh, I really would open it up. I would say that this conference is, is truly appropriate for teachers, coaches, district leaders, campus leaders, central office leaders, university folk. Um, there's at every grade level, if you lead pre-K teachers, if you lead college professors, there's something here for you. So uh, you need to just get registered. So the easiest way to do that is to go to our website. I know I mentioned it before, but I'm just going to mention it again because somebody was listening while they were driving. Maybe they didn't have a chance to pull over and grab a pen, but uh, mathedleadership.org and click on the 55th annual conference. You've got links to registration for our pre-conference sessions. If you wanna come and dig into some of those, we've got Joe Bowler, we've got people, uh, Aaron and Pam focusing on our culturally relevant book series, book from our book series. Um, we have got uh, uh, regular sessions that you can register for. You can get your hotel booked from our website uh, at the Washington Renaissance. So there's so much, uh, many hyperlinks that'll take care of all of your officing, uh, all of your business, the business side of getting you to the conference right there at our website. And if there's any questions, you can always reach out to anyone on the board and we can guide you to the right place to get you taken care of. Awesome. 
I love Karen too. Can I just say this? I just saw it on the website. Um, I can't wait to get my social media badge uh, so that I can post on my Instagram and Twitter that I'll be at NCSM's annual conference in D.C. So I want to see everybody's social media badges, uh, whatever badge applies to you, download it, put it on your profiles, let people know where you can be found October 28th through the 31st in Washington, D.C. All right. You guys, Karen and Gina, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for all the work that you're doing on the conference to make this an amazing experience for our members and for our network and for each other. Uh, we are so excited about it. Can I share one more thing? Absolutely. So sometimes I'll just say this. I say this because your podcast has the perfect name. You know, some people don't identify themselves as math people. But I would say, of course, we're all mathers or doing of math, right? Doers of math. But my challenge for, for people is this. If you serve students in any type of capacity, because teachers have influence, they are leaders, coaches, principals, superintendents, district level staff. If you serve students that are currently learning mathematics and they're not learning to the highest level and you're frustrated with that or you're wanting to have more equitable outcomes, then this is the place to come. NCSM, I'd love to see more principals there. I'd love to see more teacher leaders there. I would love to see more district staff there. Like I want everyone to know you will not feel intimidated. We are a very welcoming space. If you were ever math traumatized or scared by math, we will welcome you with open arms because stories are very welcoming. And so I just want to challenge, you know, I have, I work with so many principals who say to me, like, I want better math scores. And I'll say to them, well, how much do you really know about math instruction? And have you been to a math conference? And I know that's a new space, but I am telling you that is where the gold is listening to these speakers, listening to these sessions and getting inspired and then going back to a school and implementing this with your teachers is the way you're going to create more equitable outcomes for students. These sessions are about access, right? That's what's really going to get us to equity is access on ramps ways to be able to support students so we get better student outcomes. So I just want to invite every single leader that's out there including teachers, because you influence teachers more than anybody else. That is the number one influencer of teachers is teachers. Join us and be with us and learn and be part of our community because we want to hear from you and we'd love to share our stories with you. So that would be like my last bit is I'm so passionate about this because we serve such a diverse group of students and I want a diverse group of people to attend to be able to enjoy these amazing keynotes that we're going to have both opening and closing. And all of our diverse speakers and all of the in-between networking events, because you're going to leave changed because stories change people. And so that's how I leave every single year. I leave better, I leave inspired, and I leave hopeful. If you care about those things, register today, spend time with us, and please say hello to Karen and I. We want to meet you. Say hi to Katie. Say hi to Brian. We are a board where we want to welcome people because we truly love this profession. And we want people to love math the way that we do. So we want to help you on that journey. So be with us in DC. We are so excited. I can't wait for it to be here. Listen up, people. Gina just said it. She rocked it out. I can't wait. Uh, everybody out there, teachers, leaders, if you are working on improving math for students, we want you. Um, and we would love to meet you and talk to you and learn alongside you. Um, so please come see us uh, October 28th through the 31st. So excited about it. And Karen said it, but I'll just repeat it one last time. MathEdLeadership.org. Click on the 55th Annual Conference button and you'll find all the information you need. So Gina and Karen, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for all you do. And we will see you soon. Thanks. See you in DC. We're going to see, yeah, see you in DC. And uh, hopefully all of our listeners, if you're listening, register today. We'll see you too. Absolutely. Cannot wait. We hope that you have been inspired by this bold mathematics leadership conversation. And we'll tune into our podcast series each month. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it with others, post about it on social media, or leave a rating and review. 
You can learn more about NCSM, Leadership in Mathematics Education, and our upcoming professional learning events on the NCSM website, mathedleadership.org. You can also follow NCSM on Twitter at mathedleaders and using the hashtag NCSMBold. Until next time.